I present to you the wooden robot bar cart. See how flush that is? Of course there had to be the most ridiculous trim on this. Of course there had to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's go time. Where am I going with this? I don't know. So two of my very favorite things in the design world are mid-century wooden furniture pieces and wacky space age futuristic designed pieces. And I think I found the single item that combines both of these so perfectly. I present to you the wooden robot bar cart. This was designed in 1969 by Italian designer Borgasani and and I want one. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm gonna challenge myself to recreate this robot bar as best I can. Please note, I am not a professional woodworker, just an enthusiast, a hobbyist, if you will. So if you're ready to join me on this journey, let's get to it. So in my journey to find as much source imagery for this project, I actually came across some other really talented people who have made their own take on the robot bar. So check out the work done by Steven, Felix, and Ewan. So cool. But all of these are beautiful finished projects and I still don't have a single tutorial to follow, so we're gonna have to figure this one out together. And one final thing, I wanna give a big thank you to Dyson for sponsoring a portion of today's video. And with that being said, let's get into the plan. My biggest challenge in recreating this robot bar is going to be getting the scale of this thing accurate because if any of the parts are off scale, it's gonna look funny, it's not gonna look right. Now I don't have the original bar here in my studio to measure. If I did, I wouldn't need to make one because I would have it. But luckily, the listing for this bar that sold on first dibs is still up and there are some rough dimensions in the description. From that information, I'm able to take a photo of my source bar and then place a grid over top. I can make my grid as tall as I know the overall bar is, and from there, I can break it down into inches to figure out exactly the scale of each separate part of this robot bar. With my grid correctly scaled, I went in and just started counting the squares and drawing my numbers. With this method, I can break down any part of this that I want and get a fairly accurate dimension of how big it should be. So now that I've got all these dimensions worked out, it's time to move on to the build. Okay, so I went to the lumber store and I bought precisely $150 in lumber. And now I'm ready to start assembling this thing. I think I'm gonna start with like the bigger, easier shapes and we'll get to the more complicated details later. Okay. So the trouble I was running into is that you can't get lumber wider than 11 and three quarters width, even at a specialty place. I went to a specialty lumber store and it just like, it's really difficult to get wide pieces. So considering that my door and like the main body of this thing is gonna be, I think like 18 something inches, uh, the best plan of action, because I didn't wanna go with plywood, which can look messy, is to join two pieces of wide lumber together to make my wide piece. So this is a one by 10 by eight which first up, I'm just gonna be gluing together some pieces before I can really do anything just to make my wide enough pieces. So I should have eight pieces that will join to make four pieces, which four pieces makes a box. Okay, all good. <laughs> Great. Okay, now we cut. Okay. Okay, I have Nina waving around the back. I just wanted to charge this. Thanks, Nina. Okay. Cool. Okay, I have all my really big pieces created and this isn't even sanded and I think they already look flush. They look like one 
really big piece, and I mean, this is gonna be the body of the robot. Okay, but before I get any further, I've made a massive mess. The floor is covered in sawdust, so I think it's the perfect time to tell you about today's sponsor, which is Dyson. How perfect is this? So, to help me clean all of this up, I have Dyson's brand new V12 Detect Slim. Thank you so much, Dyson, for sending this to us because we literally need it real bad right now. If you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I am a big Dyson fan because their products really do live up to the hype. This is the Dyson V12 Detect Slim. It is the newest vacuum, but also the smallest and the lightest intelligent cordless vacuum that they have, weighing in at only 2.2 kilograms, but it's still super powerful. It comes with two cleaner heads. The first is the Laser Slim Fluffy Cleaner Head, which features laser illumination, which reveals hidden dust on hard floors that you might often miss. I don't know about you guys, there have been plenty of times where I have missed spots under chairs or consoles in hard to reach places, so a feature like this really helps. And the second head they have is the Detangling Motor Bar Cleaner Head, which works on all floor types and is perfect for picking up pet hair. It features a detangling comb, which automatically clears hair from the brush. Not only do I love how easy it is to maneuver, but the V12 Detect Slim is engineered to detect hidden allergens and pollen as small as 10 microns to ensure you get that deep, satisfying clean. And now that our mess is all cleaned up, it's time to get back to building that robot. Thank you so much, Dyson. <laughs> okay, so time to build the body and the head, both of which are just basic boxes, like a four-sided box, drawer front on the front. But the funny thing about this is that they are all angled because the robot's not square like this. He's kind of got a little bit of a tilt to him. So I'll have to cut some angles into these and then assemble the boxes. Yes. 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 Next game plan should be to make the bottom. Nina. Yeah. Pivot. Sorry. Nina, we have to pivot. Pivot. <laughs> that sounds like Schitt's Creek. <laughs> Way more than it does. From Moira's yes. coming out. I know, but you're doing a strong Moira right now. Okay, one and five eighths. Three, four, five, and then the <gasps> okay. Too many angles. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So good. how lush that is? Can you see it? See how flush that was? How does it look? Yeah, angles. It looks really good. Okay, glue. Instead of a footstool, this is a head stool because the head goes on it. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, uh, thoughts, feelings, concerns. Let's have a check-in moment on how it's going. Um, we have made a lot of really good progress on cutting all the pieces and assembling all of the things, although we did get hung up on a certain part that I did not expect it to be so difficult. <laughs> As you see on the original robot, none of him is straight. There's a ton of angled cuts, specifically angles in the neck and the angle on like the accent piece on top of the main drawer unit. You have to essentially make a shape that looks like this. I think 
Is it like a trapezoid? That is a good question. I originally thought it was a trapezoidal prism, but oh. I feel like that has differently shaped sides. So t TBD. <laughs> TBD. Someone I'm sure will know in the comments. Essentially, this is a compound angle miter box that you have to cut out of wood, meaning that there are angles on every side of your cut, including top, bottom, and the 45 on the inside. And this was extremely difficult to the point that I consulted not one, not two, three different woodworking professionals that all should do this, like, and know the simple answer on how it's done. And the first two basically concluded that it was impossible to do with the equipment that we had, that our saw couldn't handle it. And the last person concluded it was possible, but just couldn't really tell me how. <laughs> but that was enough to just keep us fueled to figure it out, and we did eventually, because we made not one of these funky angled boxes, but we made two. <laughs> and since there was such a lack of information on how this is done, and I don't want anyone else to be in the dark for this, I think we'll make a YouTube short after just summarizing how you do this, because it's really not that bad, you just need someone to explain it, and there was no one for us. So, and I wanna show you too how I did it. <laughs> Absolutely, I would love to see. <laughs> because it was, the funniest part was it was actually easier than we thought. We were really overthinking it. <laughs> it's not that bad, we figured it out. I'm feeling good. That was just a hurdle to get through. But uh, now we're on to the more fun assembly stuff. So, let's get back to building. I'm uh, going to leave myself a message inside the neck before I properly screw it on for whoever, whenever, if ever this gets taken apart, they'll know who built this. Okay, so let's talk about these legs. They are not a straight up and down leg because of course they're not. <laughs> they're a fancy shape thing. So I have this two by eight, I believe is what this is. So it's quite thick, and I'm gonna have to make a custom cut two different shapes for the legs. So I think what I'm gonna do is do my best attempt to draw something that I like, probably on paper, so I can cut it out, flip it, trace it, so we have two legs that look exactly the same. This seems really small, but my scale says this is right. inside of a leg. Do you see it? Do you believe it? <laughs> this gives strong um, the goat guy in Narnia. but I think this is something you can do. Spinning sandpaper. I don't think that's a thing you can do. Okay, so around the top and bottom of the main drawer on this guy, there is this fancy fluted wood trim. From the photos, it looks like it's a piece of wood that already had the fluted pattern cut into it, probably with some sort of like, I don't even know what you would do in the 70s, how they would do that. But I think it's a piece of wood that already had that pattern that the, then they cut the box out of. I don't have that, I couldn't source it. So we figured out a hack on how to make something that looks like that. I'm gonna do it out of essentially a lot of little wooden dowels that I plan to trim down 
and make something that looks like that. Because just, of course, there had to be the most ridiculous trim on this that we need to copy. Of course there had to be. Okay, quick hack, because I have to cut a ton of these, um, and it's really difficult to hold a whole bundle at once in the saw and apply enough pressure and not have them fly all over the place and get your measurements all wrong. So what I've been doing is bundling my dowels together with some tape. This keeps them all even and stops them from flying all over the place when you're cutting and it's been such a time saver. And now I have like a perfectly even bundle of my dowels the exact length. They didn't go flying, they cut perfectly, so easy. That's all there is. <laughs> okay, who is ready to see this stacked and Okay, legs with fancy trim. Then we have box number one, which is the body. Okay, something like that. Then we need more fancy trim. Box number two. Then we need a neck. And then we need a head. What do you think? Is it centered? Does it look good? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Only spent how long working on this? It's really good. Oh my god. Now that I'm stepping back here, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> I love you already. Um, yeah, it needs doors and it needs arms and a lot of other fancy little things like the hands we still have to figure out. But I'm feeling so good about how this is coming. I know this is supposed to be like kids knobs, but these ones like isolated are actually really cool. Okay, first of all, I just can't like comprehend that I found these little hands. I worry the scale is gonna be wrong and they're too tiny, but I can return them if they're not. And I just, I couldn't not because I saw them like, what? And then I wasn't sure about eyeballs. So I got two different wood size ones. One that's a little bigger and one that's a little tinier. And we'll figure out what feels more appropriate. And then I wasn't even planning to get this there because I just didn't think they would really have it. I mean, I was hoping, but I didn't think. They actually had little um, vintage skeleton keys for sale. I think they're all the same, so I can't imagine this would actually be useful for like a real lock, but I don't need it. This will be fun to figure out together. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't. That's all. <laughs> okay, it is the next day. And I think we're ready to start moving on to the detail stuff of this, which I am so ready for. That is the fun stuff. This is the magic that's gonna make this like, it's what makes this look so cool. And I'm ready to move on. Not that this hasn't been a blast. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have a door piece here. Um, and then I'm gonna use this long hinge. This is called a continuous hinge, also known as a piano hinge, I believe. It's just gonna go in here, hopefully, line up nicely. It's okay, it's okay. And these baby screws can be so tricky to start on their own, but you can use this thing, which is called an awl, and it literally just makes 
a punch in soft wood, and it's so easy to then put these in. Yeah! That's sexy. <laughs> Okay, so, well, this does kind of stay closed, but I don't trust it, so magnet's what we're gonna use. This is like the most old-timey one I could find. It's like brass, and then it works by this little washer being magnet-y that you can stick to your door. But I feel like it's one of those things that's not gonna be as simple to install, because getting it to line up, you know, is a challenge. Okay, so, I think that's good, that's touching. It's gonna be tricky to know exactly where to put this on here so that it's perfectly centered on the magnet. So, I have a hack. It involves this, which is a stamp pad. <laughs> so, what you can do to get the washer to be the perfect spot on here and to know where that is, you can take a stamp pad, take your washer, get the washer all stampy, then put the stampy washer on the magnet, get it all centered perfectly, do not get your wood covered in ink as you're doing this. And then you close your door. And then hopefully, when you open it, hopefully, when you open it, you can see a little ring. You see your little washer perfectly marked on there. And now I know where to put my screw, which is right there. Hacked, even hacked, even tipped, even informed. Hey, yeah, that's magnetized. Shoot, <laughs> okay, hold on. That brings me to the next part, which is how we need a handle to open this. Good segue as to this is actually difficult to open. <laughs> okay, old timey key that I acquired. Now on the real thing, there's like a lock here, I assume, that you put the key in, turns it, and then your door opens. Couldn't really find that mechanism. Seemed real difficult to install, so we're gonna fake it um, since I don't need to actually lock this. But I do, however, need something to act as a handle um, to open the door, especially down here where there will not be knobs. So what I'm gonna do is file this little tip off the key, make a hole for it so we can glue it in place permanently. It will act as the knob to open this and just look cool like the real thing. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah! Oh my god. When concept works, it's a good feeling. Okay, the hands. I don't think that the scale of the ones that I found at Lee Valley are going to work, which is so heartbreaking, but I have a backup plan. And this is really gonna come down to, can I be artistic enough to make these look like actual hands? I have some oven bake modeling clay that I'm going to do my very best to sculpt into two right angle hands that are gonna hold this door. Let's get modeling. <laughs> Just drawing it on the paper so then I can like have something to hold my clay up to. It's hard because I'm trying to draw a flat thing that will end up being bent. But right now I'm trying to figure it out flat. They're like solid fingers until they curve, so. Okay, something like this looks pretty good to me. Okay, thumb, pointer finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. Ah! Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> okay, this hand needs to do this. So I already figured out how to make the arms kind of hinge, but the wrist, we need to have something. So I'm gonna use a giant popsicle stick to build the hand onto that I can then screw my bolt through and have the hand move. That's the game plan. Do you see the vision? It's just missing fingers. <laughs> this is so funny. Are you kidding me? 
cut me off in traffic, I'll have this ready. It's the funniest thing. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? <laughs> Dead. Dead. <laughs> We need some fingernails. This is really creeping me out, like holding it like this. I feel like I'm holding a child's hand. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Maybe I'm going backwards, guys. Oh, that doesn't look so bad. Hi, how you doing? Okay, I gotta stick this finger back on. <laughs> Good thing with clay is you can kind of just mush it back together and it's fine. Okay, time for an update. <laughs> I think it's working. We have some hands. Before I send them to the oven to bake, I'm just gonna take some water and a paintbrush, smooth down the clay, make it as beautiful as possible. Okay, wait, come here, okay. but don't look. Okay, this, okay, hold on, close your eyes. Okay, Rochelle, what do you think? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, they're even better than I thought they'd be. Really? Me yeah. too, actually. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be able to pull it off. They look oh pretty ridiculous, God. don't they? Like they even got little nails. I know. Oh my God. <laughs> So you're gonna start coming after Kelsey's uh, mini content? <laughs> oh, <laughs> mini <yes. laughs> To the oven. <laughs> okay, I have been testing some things with an arm because I really don't know how this works, but this is what we've got two pieces with a uh, Chicago screw in the middle to act as a joint. A joint, make a joint. But now I think I really need to put the hand on to know for sure and I'm so nervous to actually use this now because I have one, well I have two. I have two of two and I can't mess them up so I'm gonna try and put a hole in this so we can make a jointed arm, see if it fits on that, go from there. Delightfully sad. Hey. I'm a real boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so step one. Does it hold? Yes. Great. That works. Yes. I mean, we're really never gonna know until it's like glued in place, which is so scary because I don't have a proper way to test it. But I don't see why this wouldn't work. Seems right to me. <gasps> okay. Seems right to me too. We've done it. So now we should just clean this up, make it pewter, and then duplicate it. <laughs> well, it's a work table, which means it's had work done. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it again, but let's not do it again, you know? Okay, I'm gonna chop these, sand these so they look nice, and then that should be good for the arms. So I think the eyeballs are made of just wooden doorknobs, of which I got two sizes, and I need to figure out which one looks better. Here is the bigger one, and this is a smaller one. I feel like bigger's the move, although honestly, like it's not the most extreme difference. Also, spacing is super important too. It just totally changes the mood, like, <laughs> cute, strange. Accurate? Yo, why is that so cute though? I don't know what it is. You always put eyes like 
low and small I was just like <laughs> but that's just that's not that's not the move <laughs> Like what if it's if it's off by like a quarter inch? Then it's, he's gonna look like drunk, which is funny because he's a bar cart robot. But <laughs> not funny. It will be funny, weird, not funny, haha. -ha. Follow us on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Wow, speechless. Welcome back to the workshop. Here's where we are. The robot has been fully built. I just went in and took off all the extra hardware, like the eyes and the keys, because do you know what time we're finally at, friends? It's finally time to give this guy some color. Now, if you've been paying attention all along, you will have noticed that I used several different types of woods and quality of woods to build this guy, which means I'm a little dubious on how a stain is gonna take to this, so before I do that, I'm gonna use a product that's supposed to help. Wood conditioner. This is exactly like putting lotion on your skin before putting self-tan on, because um, without this, the self-tan will just stick to the dry skin and it will be blotchy. And without this, the stain will not stick evenly to the wood. This analogy is almost too perfect that I don't need to explain it. You guys get it. Let's condition. Okay. It's go time. Where am I going with this? I don't know. Okay, he's been sanded, colored, and sealed, and it's finally, I've been waiting so long to say this, it's basically the last step now where we put all the final, final, final pieces on it. Like the key I figured out earlier, but now I'm really gonna glue it in place. I'm using E6000, which is just a really strong construction adhesive. I'll put some glue in the hole and then get the key in there, and then we can put the arms on and attach the hands the same way. the hand it's functioning the way it should which is amazing my best friend is going for a run oh, it's too weird <laughs> i think we need to glue it in the open position yeah and more importantly than the closed position but i think because it's a tiny bit higher than once it's dry to be let go it'll be perfectly flat and this will be tight hopefully there's no way to know, like there's literally no way to know, which is the worst part about this. I like, won't know until it's stuck in place forever. True. Alright. Let's try the other side. <laughs> My goodness you guys I cannot believe we have finally made it to the end and the robot bar cart has come to life do I think there are things that I could have done better yes did I learn a heck ton about building and making along the way double yes and am I proud of the final result a thousand percent yes 
If you enjoyed coming along on this journey with me, consider subscribing because it really is just a great way to show your appreciation of this content. And if you're looking for something to watch next, let me put you onto this video where I redid my entire walk-in closet in my house in a very 70s retro style similar to this. I made these amazing mid-century wall built-in shelves and also this retro flat lay drawer unit that is an amazing IKEA hack. Check it out. I will see you guys there.